Yeah, that's a lot of command blocks. Hello guys, this is Spiderrock and welcome back to Minecraft FPS. Today I'm going to be showing you guys some of the behind the scenes on how I made this map. Someone, I don't remember who, a while ago asked me to do a video on the commands about this map and just how, how everything works and that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to show you everything that you need to know. As always, most of you guys are not subscribed, so please subscribe and blah blah blah. And anyway, let's hop right into this. Okay, so I guess I'm going to show you guys first how I made the game mode selection. Uh, game type selection and then map selection. Um, it's all not that complicated really So I guess we're, we can start with uh, with game modes. Let's start with uh, let's see. How about Slayer the classic? So when I click that button it activates this little line of commands right here So the first command here fills one of these rows either down here or up here with air replacing the redstone blocks um, just to get rid of so for, for ones like uh, whatever this one and this one and uh, this one are, they um, they have these command blocks here which need those redstone blocks, uh, which is what the second command here does. It sets essentially that block uh, down to and over one, um, a redstone block. So if I wanted to have an effect or something happening on a certain game mode, I could have that happen. Um, and then this first command block just sort of resets that for the other game modes. Uh, anyway, the third command block says at be selected slayer. Um, so that will just say like that you selected something for all these run and gun, uh, shoddy snipers, all of that. It'll, it'll say, you know, at P it substitutes in the nearest player. Um, so usually that's the person who presses the button. Although sometimes as you've seen before, probably it's not. Um, and then the next one fills this little area with stone. So that is this strip right here. Um, this will all be filled with stone and then the command after that, the command uh, after the one that fills it with stone, will set a corresponding block relating to this set of commands with air. So that's the second one over as you can see, and this is the second one over here. Um, so when I play the game essentially, when I hit the start button and when, when people respawn and stuff, a redstone block ends up spawning right here. And then it repeatedly, and then after like five ticks, it will get set to air. But a redstone block gets sent here, which activates uh, this, which I guess we'll get into in a second or in a minute or whatever. Um, and this is how you get loadouts. Uh, let, let's continue on with this. I'm, I'm getting sidetracked now. Um, so that block gets set to air. Well, the whole thing gets set to stone and then the chosen block gets set to air. And then these two here are just replacing, doing the same thing that the first one did, making sure that all of this, the only thing with a redstone block is, um, is this one here. Of course, this one doesn't need a redstone block, so there's not actually one there. Um, and then tag at a add mode. So that's how we get into the system where if you don't select a game mode or a game type or a map, it will give you a little error saying like, hey, you didn't select a game mode or a game type. Um, so essentially tagging, it, these command blocks here test for those tags. So if there is a player with these tags, with any of these tags, uh, map, type, or mode, then it runs this command into this these command blocks here. Um, which of course I've already pushed that uh, pushed that button there as you saw so this one has been activated And um, then these command blocks this first one here sets this block to air from stone allowing uh, This redstone current to eventually pass through to here um, Which will allow a thing over here this guy right here uh, This block this stone block here to go away and it will allow you to actually run the game It's kind of complicated um, but you know, there's a link in the description. You can download this and check it out for yourself I'm just sort of giving my explanation as to how I have this working um, So to simplify things you push the button it gives you a tag the tag gets rid of a block and puts a block there That block corresponds to these command blocks, which will actually say the message uh, Oops, which will actually say the message of the error um, and then the actual error will happen here when this one is uh, when this one is not Build in if that makes sense. So when you start a redstone block is put here that will then give you these error messages if you have error messages and will not give you the error messages if you have the tags and the blocks are there. Uh, like I said, this is pretty complicated stuff, I guess. So uh, let's just move on to the next thing. Um, all right, so for selecting game type, each of these game types has like a different sort of process for selecting them. But essentially what they're doing is doing the same kind of thing that I did with this little bit of stone here, except over here. Um, so it will change what uh, what happens when you push the start game button. So right now I'm pretty sure this is team deathmatch I have selected. Um, so it opens this 
one channel, I guess you could call it up here, which allows all of these to be executed. Now, I don't think I have time in one video to show you guys every single command that's, um, that's added here, but essentially what it does is it teleports and gives tags to different players. Um, so it will go back and forth, at least team deathmatch between since it's red team versus blue team, it gives someone a tag red and then teleports that person into the red box and then gives another random person a tag blue that doesn't have a tag red or blue already and teleports them into this blue box right here. And uh, that's these little boxes here, which are just completely empty except for a blue floor or a red floor. So it's easy to tell what team that you are on. Um, and then when the game eventually starts, I guess we should go ahead and get into the maps because this is kind of like the important thing, the maps and the scoring, which don't really have to do with these commands here. These are just kind of setup commands. So most of them are just setting up the scoreboards and uh, filling areas like this with stone just to allow you to select things later. It's like selecting something to select something, if that makes sense. Anyway, with the maps, so the maps are also kind of the same, selecting something to select something. So for the maps, it's kind of the same thing. This whole area is filled with stone. The chosen map is filled with air. And then you can, uh, whenever you actually play the game, uh, a redstone block will be put here and then deleted that activates one of these maps. So these maps all, I guess the commands for all these maps pretty much all just do one thing and that's summon armor stands. So each of these summons an armor stand at each of the spawn points. Um, and and then the last thing it does is summon a chicken named out um, at the place where you will go if you run out of lives in a solo mode or a free for all kind of mode. So I teleported over here to the map bridges, for example, to show you where these things spawn in. So if I go ahead and grab myself one of these grasses, you can see this is where the armor stand will spawn. And sometimes when you spawn in, since the chunk hasn't loaded and you teleport over here before the chunk completely loads, you will fall into this hole. And that's why I've added a command block that sort of teleports you up. So that's why you sometimes will end up in a little bit of a loop of like falling down and getting teleported back up. And I may be taking a little bit of damage, but that's also why I have respawn invincibility. So you don't take any of that damage. Um, and then when it comes to the, here, let me grab a, uh, a barrier block from over here when it comes to the chicken the chicken will get spawned or i guess teleported or summoned or whatever into this little box here this is my chicken box every map has an out box and a chicken box below it um and when you die or when you run out of lives you'll get teleported a couple blocks above the chicken um, which is inside the chicken box so you will be inside this little out box that you cannot escape if you're in adventure mode um, but you can still look down and spectate the map although i think a lot of them you are going to be too high up to actually see the players um, i hope bedrock edition gets further entity render distances soon um, i don't know if that's a thing um so when it comes to actually playing like this everybody gets teleported they get their tags added a scoreboard is created and the scores are set for the scoreboard and that's pretty much all that it does. Um, it just sets scores and sets goals for scores. Now, how, how like, I'm gonna do free for all here as an example, how it tells like when you are out essentially, or when you've won, um, is that it fills, so I think this first line here is player one. Um, I think the tag is like A or whatever, but the first player here, um, so whenever a player is put into the game, it's kind of hard to explain, but every one of these blocks gets filled, like a block goes over them to cut off the redstone signal, except for the one where they are. So if I'm player one um, and, I so, and I start a game, player one will have blocks here, here, uh, and here, and so on and so forth, all the way down there, everywhere except for right here, where there will not be one. Because if you do end up being the last person standing, it triggers this little thingy over here, which triggers this whole thing, which uh, says that you win and ends the game, essentially. And when you're out, all of your blocks get deleted along here, uh, sort of eliminating one more like row um, for other players to get through. So you can kind of think of it as like, uh, this is player one, this is player two, and player three. Uh, and then let's say I'm player four, for example. So I'm my block would be right here for everybody else, but for myself, it's not. And um, then player one dies, player two dies, player three dies. And then that means that I have a clear path all the way down to my command block over here, which is that command block, which says that I win the game. And so these commands here essentially test to see that people are out of lives. So each of these, you know, scoreboard players test at P tag equals a live zero zero. So when you run out of lives, uh, it fills, oops, it fills that area, uh, replacing the clay, it fills it with air. Um, so that gets rid of your, your blocks for everyone. So everybody can be closer to winning. And then it says that you're out 
and then it teleports you to the chicken named out like I saw earlier. And respawning is kind of a whole ordeal as it clears your inventory and then it teleports you over here uh, and then it gives you the uh, tag spawn and then it removes one life when you hit the little pressure plate over here. And then when you push the button, it sets a block to redstone block. So that's this block over here that we were looking at before. It sets this block to a redstone block. And then if we come back over here, you can see that's the block to a redstone block. Um, and then it, it removes that tag from you. And so by setting that block to a redstone block, it executes one of those commands, which gives you all of those items. Um, so that's how you get the items and then it gives you resistance, which is your spawn invincibility and then it teleports you to a random armor stand. Um, and it would be a random armor sta stand tag equals R or name equals R. I can't remember. I think name equals R or red for red team and name equals blue for blue team because there are different armor stands for each team. I don't feel like I'm doing that good of a job at explaining this because there's just so many commands and so much stuff going on. So like I said, if you want to download the map and just explore it to see um, the commands for yourself, uh, this don't think of this as a tutorial. Think of it more as just a showcase, I guess, of like how the commands work, even though I can't properly explain it without just actively showing it. And you can go back and watch a couple of my streams. I have a playlist of my live streams. Um, where you can watch me work on this map so you can kind of see what I'm doing when I did it. Um, and I think that would probably clarify it if you're trying to use this map as a reference for something you're trying to make something like it. Other than commands, one of the most important things about this map is I guess the individual maps and how they flow. So I don't know if this is actual terminology, but this is how I think of it. So flow in a map for this map, um, haha funny map map, means to me at least that you can go in a direction and you never have to run into a dead end you never have to stop running or stop moving in some way so you could go in here and then you could push the button and drop down here and then you could maybe i don't know you could go down here and you could just keep going in this direction um but other than flow there's also cover which is very important that's why we have you know the water there or this here blocking you or there's a tree over here but there's all of this flow i want to have a lot of ways that you can you can choose where you want to go and it's important to this map um, and to the maps in this map that there's different ways you can go no matter where you are. So I can go up here and then I could keep going around here. And then maybe instead of like keeping on going through this path, I could go into here and then I could hop up onto here and jump over over this fence and then maybe head back down here. It's all about the flow. It's all about keeping players, you know, moving throughout the maps. And some maps have more flow and better flow than others. This map really only has one place where it doesn't have like any flow at all. And that's uh, this little hallway right in here is so that you can walk down here and there's nowhere to go from here except turn around. I just thought it'd be cool to have a little window here um, for like atmosphericness, I guess, and to be able to see out there. Um, but the whole point of this is like, don't go down here because if you do, you're kind of stupid because you're probably going to get shot from there or up there or if someone runs out of here and you'll be cornered and you'll have nowhere to go unless you can make your way back into this little room and uh, make your way out of here and you could go through these doors and you've got all kinds of buttons. Oop, that's the pog button. All right. Um, I did not realize that that was the pog button. Okay. And then you can head over here and then back up here. That's, that's the whole point is to have the flow. And uh, that's, that's kind of the map structure part. So yeah, I hope this helped some of you. If any of you were curious about like how I made this map and why I made this map and why we made this map, including the other people that worked on the map. Um, and you can download it in the description. Also, if you're interested in playing it or anything, I didn't go over all the commands. There are so many commands, as you can see behind me, too many for me to go over in one video. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this, where I'm just explaining how I did things like with this map or for add-ons or for other command related things that aren't necessarily tutorial, but can maybe inspire you or can show you just the methods that I use to do things or, you know, convince you to download the map and check it out for yourself. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you made it to here, uh, I have more better videos coming soon, but I had a lot to do today. So I just, you know, I wanted to do something that I could quickly and easily do and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, thanks for watching me to here. See you guys later and bye.